Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Peter Berba. I'm the acting uh, cultural affairs officer at the U.S. Embassy in Abuja. Um, this is the second year I've had the privilege to, to speak to the uh, our West Africa um, Global Entrepreneurship Week um, program, and I want to thank everyone for, um, for for tuning in and for also coming uh, physically to our network of, of American spaces. Um, I think, um, you know, I had the chance to oversee American spaces in Nigeria and visiting them and seeing the resources they provide is some, one of the most exciting parts of, of my job. And um, I know that some of you today are joining from new windows on America in Nigeria. And so very excited um, to, um, to have you all tuning in at new and existing spaces. And of course, the the theme of inclusion for this year's, for this week's uh, program is, is a major topic uh, for us at the State Department and, and in the, the U.S. government. And so, um, but each year in November, the U.S. Uh, celebrates uh, National Entrepreneurship Month, taking the time to honor the builders, dreamers, and doers who not only contribute to the uh, Hello. Sorry, there has been a technical glitch. Just a moment, he'll be back. Mittelstein to describe the the small and medium entrepreneurs as well, often family-owned business who are the backbones of, of Germany, which has been, you know, for many years, the largest uh, exporter in the world. And so, you know, entrepreneurs, uh, you know, have come up with some of the, you know, the best known brands, you know, I think of the, the Silicon Valley giants like HP and Google and Apple and PayPal that often started in kind of the, in the garage uh, of someone and then built in, came into these giant companies. Um, my, my colleague, uh, Jamie Moody, who spoke at last year's uh, opening from our economic section, she'd like to talk about Aurora James and her luxury brother Valise brand um, with both online and physical boutiques uh, where you can order shoes crafted in, in South Africa. And uh, it's a, she's a designer who's in the States was very focused on cooperating with, with Africa. And, um, we at the U.S. Mission in Nigeria understand these the importance of of entrepreneurship, and let me highlight let me highlight some of the ways we're supporting entrepreneurs. Uh, for example, through the Academy of Women Entrepreneurs uh, in Nigeria, we've uh, it's been around for less than a decade, but we've supported over eight hundred women with training, and uh, twenty of the best graduates have received hundreds of thousands of dollars in support for the U.S. African Development Foundation. Um, we're also focusing on Nigeria's creative economy. Uh, last week, the uh, Assistant Secretary of the uh, Economics Bureau of the State Department visited um, Lagos and uh, you know attended uh, AFRIF and met with some of the key players uh, and spoke about the enormous impact the creative economy could have in Nigeria. And mentioning AFRIF, the big film festival, you know, we held master classes for emerging filmmakers in Lagos with the U.S. experts. And at the upcoming uh, Zuma Film Festival in Abuja, we'll be holding master classes for uh, animators with the famous artists. Um, to the Ambassador's Special Self-Help Fund, uh, whose applications for that will be opening in the coming months, uh, we provided financial support to rebuild, rehabilitate a historic pottery workshop that supports over 1,000 artisans in Sokoto. And... Um, Another big project has been the U.S. Department of Agriculture cooperating with uh, Lutheran World Relief 
to launch a program to support 68,000 farmer efforts to increase cocoa productivity across six states in Nigeria. Um, I know for the, uh, those tuning in in other West African countries, uh, I don't have the, the best overview of all that's going on, but I, you know, I'm sure your American spaces are, are resources to, to find out where, um, how uh, the U.S. mission in your country is supporting um, entrepreneurs. You know, and just with that is, um, um, well, you know, one story I always think about as, as inspiration is the, um, is just kind of the, you know, that things may not always happen on the, um, on the first try, but it's that it's, you know, it's okay to, um, to, to fail. And the, um, you know, the, um, people always, uh, what one story I learned in high school was about Sylvester Stallone and he wrote the script for Rocky and he, he submitted that to hundreds of corporations trying to get funding and, and people accepted the script and said, you know, we can do it, but you can't play the role, you know, and he, he persevered and, you know, eventually he became one of the most famous actors in the world. And, um, and so, you know, just a lot of, stories like that where um initially things may not um work out on the on the first try but on the you know second third or fourth or or fifth try um and i think that's that's a message that um everyone can take a heart but so special thanks to uh uh liberia ghana gabon cameroon uh ivory coast uh sierra leone apologies if i'm missing anything and um Looking forward to today's program. Thank you. Let's put our hands together for Peter, everybody. Hi, Peter. Thank you very much for that insightful uh, introduction. We are very, very grateful. For those who are just joining us, this is Global Entrepreneurship Week for 2023. I have in the house our resource persons for today. Uh, before I introduce them, I would like you to know that the sub theme for today is Youth Entrepreneurship for Social Inclusion. This sub theme focuses on promoting entrepreneurship among youth and students in West African region as a means of fostering social inclusion. It aims to remove barriers that hinder marginalized youth from participating in entrepreneurship activities and create an inclusive entrepreneurship ecosystem that welcomes all. The key objectives, number one, we're trying to see how we can promote skill development for entrepreneurs, how we can bring to your attention inclusive access to resources for those who are going through such challenges. And finally, the session's objective is to promote entrepreneurship that addresses social and environmental challenges. And to help us with the discussion today, we have two fantastic speakers, and I'll be introducing them one by one. First person is Chief Alex Nalo, Jr. Is 2023 Mandela Washington Fellow, is a founder and community engagement lead at Nalo Junior Arts Academy in Syria alone. Alex is an artist and creative entrepreneur, passionate about community engagement, arts, supporting creatives and entrepreneurs, and helping people discover their potential realize their dreams and lead change in their communities. With extensive expertise, leadership, technology, citizen engagement, business development, heart innovation, multimedia, communication, and design thinking, Alex serves as a consultant, mentor, speaker, writer, trainer, media personality and advocate for community engagement. Not only is Alex deeply committed to a life of service and leadership, but he is also a member of the Rotary Club of Free Freetown Sunset, embodying the value of Rotary International 
and founder of Syria Loan Debating Council. Additionally, he has been recognized as a Queen Young leader and a Mandela Washington fellow. Further exemplifying his dedication to making a difference. Alex's ultimate purpose is to transform lives and share knowledge for the betterment of society, constantly striving to create a positive impact through his various endeavors. Please welcome with me, Alex. Let's put hands together to welcome Alex, everybody. Alex, you're welcome. Thanks, thanks a lot. I'm honored. Let thanks a lot. I'm this. honored and privileged. Thank you very much. The second speaker, fantastic speaker, Kadra Atai Okareje, uh, also known as Caroline from Nigeria, is a program and project strategy planner for youth-led organizations. Kadura is an alumni of study of the United States Institute SUSI Exchange Program on Social Entrepreneurship. She's working with young people across Africa on collaborative entrepreneurship for a more progressive Africa. She has represented Nigeria and uh, Africa at various high level dialogues and projects. Currently, she is the Chief of Affairs as a Milda Health and Development Initiative and Executive Secretary for Signature Autos and Allied Services Limited. Kaldura has represented Nigeria and Africa at various projects, dialogues, and over the years she has volunteered, worked, and initiated projects on diplomatic relations and sustainability, sustainable communities at the national and international levels since 2010. Pre presently, she's consulting for various organizations on collaborative entrepreneurship and mobilization. Please welcome with me, Caldera, to this occasion today. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks. I will now have the honor of inviting Daniel Holu, the director of the American uh, Center in Abuja, to please uh, to take over the moderation of the event. Thank Daniel? you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, Samuel. Um, that was a very welcoming address. Uh, you read there for our speakers for today. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for being on our program. Uh, we'll go ahead uh, and give our speakers the opportunity to share their word of experience with us. Um, I will first and foremost call on Alex uh, to give us a, a brief uh, presentation. He's going to spend just within 15 to 20 minutes and thereafter we'll call Kadira to make a presentation Then we'll go into the discussion proper. There will be a and a session. Please sit tight and be patient to and. You can, for some of you, please, um, you can type in your questions. We'll pick them up and throw it at them and we'll see how they respond to each of your questions. So, uh, Alex, over to you now. Hello, is, that, is Alex there? All right, it seems we lost Alex. All right, but we're happy to have Kadura to take on that spot immediately and share experience with us. Probably when Alex is back, Alex will take it off from there. Kadura, are, you, are you ready for us? Yes, I am, but I think he's back. I heard a hello. Hello, hello Alex, sorry. Are you back? sorry. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry, internet was a bit faulty. Sorry, I'm back. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Please, you will now have the floor. We'll go ahead and share your experience with us. I have between 15 to 20 minutes. If it's less than that, we'll be very happy and glad. Thank you so much. Over to you. Okay, good morning again. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm excited to join all of us this morning to celebrate the Global Entrepreneurship Week because we recognize the immense potential of youth entrepreneurs, you know, in fostering social inclusion 
in creating positive change within our communities. You know, this week we come together to celebrate the innovative spirit, resilience, and passion of young entrepreneurs who are driving economic growth and social progress across the continent and as well as the world. Youth entrepreneurship, uh, it's, it's a powerful catalyst for social inclusion and it provides young people with the opportunities to unleash their creativity, pursue their passions and contribute meaningfully to society. By empowering young individuals, we who are in turn gonna become the next big entrepreneurs in the continent, we enable them to overcome barriers, break free from the cycles of poverty and shape their destinies. One of the key strengths of youth entrepreneurship lies in its ability to bridge societal gaps and promote diversity and inclusion. By embracing entrepreneurship, young people from marginalized backgrounds, regardless of their social economic status, gender, ethnicity, or disabilities, can access equal opportunities and challenges and also challenge uh, traditional barriers to success. By fostering an inclusive entrepreneur ecosystem, we can unlock the untapped potential of millions of young minds driving innovation and creating a more equitable society. Moreover, but also addresses pressing social issues. Today's young entrepreneurs are not only driven by profit, but also by the desire to make positive impact on their communities and the world. They are using entrepreneurial skills and mindset to tackle challenges such as climate change, poverty, inequality, and access to education and health care. By leveraging their creativity and resourcefulness, young entrepreneurs are providing and are proving that businesses can be a force for good and that profit and purpose can go hand in hand. To fully realize the potential of youth entrepreneurship for social inclusion, we need to provide young people with the necessary support, resources, and mentorship Governments, educational institutions, and the private sector must collaborate to create an enabling environment that nurtures young entrepreneurs and equip them with the skills, knowledge, and networks needed to thrive. This includes fostering entrepreneurship education, providing access to affordable financing, simplifying regulatory frameworks, and also offering mentorship and networking opportunities for young people in the continent. During this Global Entrepreneurship Week, let us celebrate the achievements of young entrepreneurs who are driving social inclusion and inspiring change. Let us recognize the invaluable contributions to our society and economies. By investing in youth entrepreneurship, we are investing in the brighter and more inclusive future for all. Together, we can empower young people to become agents of change, creating businesses that not only generate prosperity, but also address the pressing challenges of our time. But now, in as much as we're celebrating this week and highlighting the successes, many your key elements of youth entrepreneurship for social inclusion? What are some of the considerations we need to make? What are some of the things that we think that we need to do to create an enabling ecosystem for young people to be inclusive wise to pursue their entrepreneurship desires? Firstly, I wanna talk on the access to opportunities. Uh, youth entrepreneurship for social inclusion requires providing young people especially those from marginalized backgrounds with equal access to opportunities. This includes access to education, training, mentorship, networking, and funding. Regardless of their social economic status, gender, ethnicity, or disabilities. And also, secondly, 
one of the key elements we want to consider is entrepreneurship education. Incorporating entrepreneurship education into formal and informal learning environments equips young people with the necessary skills, knowledge, and mindset to start and run successful businesses. It helps them develop critical thinking, problem solving, and entrepreneurial culture that values innovation and risk taking. Thirdly, diverse and inclusive ecosystem. Creating an entrepreneurial ecosystem that embraces diversity and inclusion is crucial. It involves removing systemic barriers and biases that hinder young entrepreneurs from underrepresented groups. This includes addressing gender disparities, promoting equal access to resources, eliminating discrimination, and fostering a culture of inclusivity and acceptance. Partly, it's uh, mentorship and support. Providing mentorship and support networks is essential for young entrepreneurs because it also accelerates their growth and success. Mentors can share their expertise, providing guidance and helping young entrepreneurs navigate the challenges and opportunities. Support networks such as entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship incubators, accelerators, and business associations offer resources, networking opportunities, and a supportive community for entrepreneurs to thrive and be more inclusive. Another key element we might want to consider as we celebrate this year's Global Entrepreneurship Week is access to finance, which we believe that can enable young people to be inclusive and can enable young people to create not only for profit, but then for community as well. Access to finance is an affordable, it, it means that providing affordable financing, though sometimes we recognize there are significant challenges for many young entrepreneurs, but creating mechanisms that provide financial support, such as microloans, grants, crowdfunding platforms, angel investor networks, can also overcome the, the barriers and enable young people to turn their entrepreneurial ideas into reality. Another key element one we also want to consider today is community engagement and collaboration. Engaging the local community and fostering collaboration among stakeholders is pivotal for youth entrepreneurship and social inclusion. Collaboration between government, educational institu institutions, NGOs, INGOs, businesses, and community stakeholders can create synergies, share resources, and develop comprehensive strategies that address the specific needs and also the challenges faced by young entrepreneurs. Another factor or element we want to consider again is social impact focus. Young entrepreneurs to embrace a social impact focus can lead to a sustainable and inclusive society as well as businesses. By addressing societal and environmental challenges through their entrepreneurial endeavors, Young entrepreneurs can contribute to positive change, improve lives, and create a more equitable society. Lastly, this morning, recognition and celebration. Recognizing and celebrating the achievements of young entrepreneurs is essential for inspiring others, but as well creating role models, publicly acknowledging their contributions, showcasing success stories, and organizing events like the Global Entrepreneurship will provide platforms to amplify their impact and promote the importance of youth entrepreneurship for social inclusion. By embracing this key element, we foster an environment where youth entrepreneurship becomes a powerful tool for social inclusion, economic growth, and as well as sustainable development. Because we do believe that young people have the answers. We do believe that young people have the passion. We do believe that young people have the desire 
to create the required change that is much needed and provide the required leadership needed for our continent, but as well as also be able to develop themselves to compete globally. So as we celebrate the Global Entrepreneurship Week today, I want to encourage all of us to have a deep reflection on many issues, social issues going on in our continent as young people, but not only coming from a position of complaining, but how do we provide solutions? Let's be the change. Let's continue to be the change. And let's continue to collaborate. Let's continue to work for our continent. I want to say I'm excited to be here this morning. And it, it's a privilege to speak to you all. And thanks very much for listening to me. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for Chief Alex. Please, let's do that right to me. Thank you so much. That was that was actually a very, very wonderful uh, presentation you just made there. Uh, we believe that our audience already they've actually um, picked one or two from what a lot of things you've said this morning already. Uh, but uh, but uh, without wasting much of our time, uh, let us move quickly to Kadura, 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 for her to make her presentation. Please, uh, I beg your pardon if we don't pronounce your name rightly. No, thank oh, you so goodness. much. Yes. <laughs> I get that. Uh, it's, you're actually correct. It's Kadlura. Uh, thank okay. you, Chief Alex. I mean, you really said so much from what uh, has been going through my mind. And um, I want to look at uh, the theme for the year a bit in line with what Chief Alex yeah. has said. But I'll be sharing my experience in terms of um, what... I have shared with colleagues, young people out there, and uh, some experiences as a person in business as well. So the topic for this year's entrepreneurship, Global Entrepreneurship Week is Youth Entrepreneurship and Social Inclusion. I'm always drawn to uh, the research by the CIA it's the CIA World Fat Book. I think if you check, I think it's available on Google as well. If you check, it says that the top 10 countries with the lowest medium age in the world, which is around 19 years, are in Africa. Africa has the world's youngest population in terms of small businesses. And so when I look at this information and try to look at who is classified as a youth, putting in mind that there is an Ade somewhere or a Leon somewhere that might be nine years old and is selling his puppies to make interest, okay? So when I look at who is termed to be a youth by the definition of either the United Nations, or the Nigerian New Charter, or the ECOWAS, and, and as we all know, other documents provided as well. I begin to question, are these documents also part of the limitations that young people are facing in terms of pursuing their careers as young people in business? So for me, um, age doesn't really matter when it comes to passion. And when we're talking about uh, entrepreneurship, we're talking about people, young people that are selling something that they are passionate about. It could be ideas, it could be products, it could be intellectual resources. For example, uh, I work with some youth-led organizations and they employ the capacities of people that are good in grant writing. So that is also a skill. So when we're talking about entrepreneurship, we're not only talking about people or young people that are selling uh, physical, goods we're also talking about young people that are selling on leveraging on their time and knowledge to be able to get well will i say payment or funding to to take care of their needs so now when we talk about entrepreneurship we can look at entrepreneurs as people starting up a business for the for the purpose of, of making profits or we can also look at social entrepreneurship where we focus on young people who are creating opportunities and businesses by addressing challenges and providing possible solutions to, to challenges in their communities. 
For example, if we're talking about social entrepreneurs, we're talking about young people like, um, let's say, young people like Esther, who is into buying and using of degradable waste to convert into pavement tiles and charcoal. We're talking about people like uh, Pachis in Tanzania, who is working on recycling non-degradable waste like bottles into decorative uh, home decorative appliances. So when we're talking about entrepreneurship, we're not only limiting entrepreneurship to big time businesses like uh, car shipping or like young people in tech. We're also talking about those people in local communities that pick up uh, pick up plastics and sell to be able to not only clean the environment towards climate justice, but to be able to make ends meet by providing for their everyday uh, needs. So now we're talking about youth enterprises. When we talk about youth enterprise, ent enterprise, we're talking about tech-driven generation. We are aware that young people now are tech-driven. We are aware that we are more focused on social impact, if not anything, the pandemic has shown us that uh, we have to do far more than seeking to be part of the white collar jobs. So, but then I don't want to look into what entrepreneurship is today because we already know what entrepreneurship is. What we are looking at today is how can young people, how can young people if socially included, benefit not only for their personal gains, but be part of the decision-making processes. So, one minute. Uh, and then when we talk about social inclusion, because I think it's important for us to understand what the word social inclusion is. Social inclusion is a society for all a place where every individual has an active role to play. I think if we understand the basics, we would, would be able to understand where we're headed. A society where fundamental values of equity, equality, social justice, freedom, human rights, as well as principles of tolerance and embracing diversity is provided. So in order for us to make everyone included, it is important that, us, we, that we prioritize who are excluded. If we're talking about youth entrepreneurs, a lot of times we forget that there are young people, they are also youths, but they are living with different abilities. I, I prefer to use the term different abilities instead of you know disabilities. And there, aside from that, we also have young people, young women who are entrepreneurs, also literally not all excluded, but a bit feeling excluded in a way. Young women, varying for opportunities as entrepreneurs. When we're talking about people or young people in entrepreneurship, we're talking about young people that do not have access to information, access to technology, access to funding as well. But then how can we create a society that would encourage youth entrepreneurs and inclusion? For me, I would say one of the challenges that uh, I faced as an individual, because I'm still a youth, as an individual, is understanding, understanding what opportunities are for young people. And I think that is the greatest question we are asking and we are all gathered here to, to find out today. What opportunities are there for young people to be able to harness on? What are those pointers or strategies that young people can use or understand to be able to grow into or be included into the business, uh, would I call it elites in, in the societies or in the continent and in the world at large? First of all, I think one of our challenges is understanding that we need to embrace diversity. A lot of times when you're working with young people, either, I, let me use Nigeria as an example. Um, we're, we're having a program uh, two weeks ago on mental, 
illness and uh, emotional intelligence. And we're asking young people, what happens if what you desire to become doesn't come through? What happens if your goal, because we kept asking, we went to various institutions and we're asking, what would affect your mental stability right now? What would be your trigger? And everybody kept saying, oh, when I don't have money, everything is going to go into crumble. I'm going to lose it all. But then the question is, what happens when you don't have access to the money? What else can you have? What else can you give? And they couldn't answer. And that is where one of the questions is coming from. And I want to challenge us with that today. What happens when we don't understand that we can leverage our time and our knowledge to build up resources that would push us into getting into the businesses we want to? Because a lot of times, uh, just like when the ambassador was giving the speech, he talked about uh, our fear to fail, our fear to fail. You can fall forward. A lot of times we are afraid and we don't necessarily understand that it takes someone to fail to be able to grow back. Let me explain that. The society is more focused on just educating young people about what entrepreneurship is but then failing to necessarily give information to young people about how they can cope with failure. Now, I started by saying how to embrace diversity. For someone like me, um, I'm from the north of northern part of Nigeria. For someone like me, I need to be able to understand that if I am to start up a, 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 a business, for example, in let's say Lagos, it will be important that not necessarily that I have to speak Yoruba or employ someone that speaks Yoruba, but it's important that I understand that there is value and culture that is different from where I'm coming from. And when I understand what is needed in that region, I will be able to blend influently and sell my products according to the needs of my customers or consumers. A lot of times, young people, we are always in a hurry to uh, copy paste opportunities. For example, there was an era a few weeks, I think a few months ago, where almost everybody was into selling. Or, or, sorry? Okay, I thought someone was talking to me. There was uh, an era, I think a few months ago, where everybody was into selling imported bags, especially for women, hair from Thailand and uh, from China and all that. And then it goes for a certain period of time. Next, you have another badge of young people that are into tech. After that, you have another badge of young people that are into another skill. There's a lot of copy and paste, but then entrepreneurship is about understanding what your talent is, what you're good in, and then channeling your skills and your understanding to be able to harness resources to build on the opportunity on ground. So one, you have to understand that as much as we are diverse, it is important for you also to understand the background of the business you want to do and its location. I think that is one of the challenges young people are having based on the experiences and expertise that I have. Um, this is my little time that I've been working with young people across. And then another thing is understanding opportunities. I think it's important that we as young people, we need to learn, just like I said, how to give and sell our time. For example, I mentioned in the beginning that there are young people that are good with grant writing. I'm into project and, uh, project and strategy planning. I'm not very good in community engagement. I know my strength. It's not, it would not be wise for me to step out of what I'm really good in to now go into something that I am a B or C in, in order to try and excel at a small period of time. I don't know if I'm making, I'm making a point here. What I'm trying to say is understand what you're good in and you'll be able to sell what you have. Another thing is understand that you have a voice. A lot of times we are scared of taking risks as young people. And I think that is one of the challenges we're having globally. It's, 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 evidence that we are limited to the opportunities we have and there's no much seat left on the table for young people. But what I'm trying to say is if there's no seat left, try and create your own table and invite your own people to the table. For example, 
if you want, uh, there's this syndrome that is going around now. They're saying uh, CEO syndrome. Everybody wants to be a CEO. Everybody wants to be head of an enterprise or a business. But then the reality is sometimes collaboration goes a long way. Now, I am Nigerian. I work with literally 10 or 15 other people from other countries in Africa. We don't physically meet all the time, but we get things done. Everybody has a skill and we have a platform where we converge once a year or twice a year to discuss how we can build on what we are already working on. For example, I'm into selling cars. Now we have someone else, for example, in Canada that buys cars. I'm, I don't go to Canada to buy cars. Then maybe we have somebody else in Lagos that will receive the shipment and help to clear the goods. If you look at the chain, you will understand that everybody is employed at a particular time, not necessarily one person doing everything in the name of owning the business. And there's a reason for that. If you want to climb the ladder and become successful, it's important that you understand that it's 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 okay to work with people. It's okay to trust. It's okay to collaborate with people and achieve the most difficult of all opportunities. Even as we're fighting towards achieving the Agenda 2063 of the African Union or the Sustainable Development Goals, you will realize that as an organization or as a company alone, you won't be able to achieve the SDGs. It takes your effort and my effort and all our efforts to be able to address the issues that we are all facing in various parts of the world. I don't know if 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 somebody is, is, is understanding where I'm getting to. Just like the program we're having today, Chief Alex brought a lot of a lot of information about opportunities and how we can continue as young entrepreneurs in social inclusion in our communities. Another person is going to continue tomorrow and another person is going to continue next tomorrow. Now, if the US government decided that they are not going to do this program and they are not going to invite everybody, they will keep the information just among prof and the people that work in American spaces. It means we're not growing as a continent. It means we're not growing as a people. But then when you partner, I think partnership is what brought us here today. If not because of someone, Alex would not be called today. Someone else reached out to me, okay? So there is power in collaboration. And then your most important asset as a young entrepreneur is your person as a brand. You yourself is the, as an individual is the brand. A lot of times we forget and we focus more on what we're selling. But then a lot of times people come back to you because of how you, sp you spoke to them how maybe you collaborated in one project they did with you or another, or the value you're bringing and the intellectual capacity you have as a person. Uh, sorry, I get a little bit carried away and um, I don't know how much time I have, but then what I want to say is when we're talking about social inclusion, we're talking about understanding that if people are socially excluded, there can be consequences. We are facing extremism across continents, not only in Africa, across continents. We are facing young people having limited access to opportunities, but at the same time, it makes me question, are we really having limited access or are we not researching enough? A lot of times, for example, now, during the COVID, so many people took on uh, courses online to be able to build on, on what they can because the world was, at a standstill. But at that time, a lot of people could not manage the mental stress and they only watch movies or relaxed, if I may say. But then the thing is, at every point in time as an entrepreneur, it's important to know that for you to become relevant, because if you're not relevant, the community would not create space for you to be included. That's, that's just the reality of what we're facing. For you to become relevant in our today, you need to not only manage your time wisely, but know how to channel your time and your knowledge to build on the skills you need to be able to grow further into the business you're into or the idea you would want to share or develop. So um, my, my, my uh, contribution for the Global Entrepreneurship Week and my take is for us to learn to manage our time. 
spend more time doing something that takes you a step closer to where you want to be. Learn to manage your skills. If you can volunteer, for some of us, we ended up where we are today because we volunteered our time. I mean, I was a volunteer eight years before my application to the SUSI program. And from SUSI program, I came back and, and I didn't sit back. I started thinking of how, because I didn't have the resources to bring up projects, especially on social entrepreneurship that I would be able to fund in my community. So in 2014, when I came back, I had to liaise with other organizations and other people and tell them, I have this idea. I think the community is a bit dirty. We are prone to malaria. We are prone to a lot of diseases. Is it possible for us to reach out to social so, so organizations so that they can help us come clean this area? And then we can sensitize women about how important it is to have a climate justice kind of environment. So. I'm just saying it's important that you understand that at every time your idea could lead you into something bigger than what you can afford. So it's important to harness your resources. It's important to research and understand that as much as there are limited opportunities, there are also opportunities idea. A lot of us are joining the, the Zoom meeting today from various American spaces. I am very sure there are some of us that are seated there that have never even gone to through to check what opportunities are there in the American spaces. I'm very certain that there are still some of us that are aware of the opportunities and have not only read books that are available in those spaces, but have also reached out to grants opportunities that are available on the website of the American Embassy and Opportunity Dex and uh, Relief Web International and other uh, donor organizations as well. I'm also aware that there are some of us that are sitting here, there are big time entrepreneurs that others might learn or be able to collaborate with and lead us to something bigger than what we are having today. So my charge for us is not to take anybody for granted. I've learned that very, 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 very hard over the years. Take everybody, especially the person sitting next to you as your next step or your next key to the information you need to grow your business or grow the idea you have that will materialize into a bigger business. And then I think for social inclusion, it's important for us to understand that uh, everything is about creating a space. That's, that's, that's ironic because we're having American spaces today and we're talking about creating space and social inclusion. For something to be socially included, it has to make an effort towards going into where it needs to be included. A lot of times we complain more than we make effort into going into what we need to do. For example, there are laws that are available and there are regulations that are available for some of us that are into export exchange, for example. For some people that want to go into cross-border trade, I'm sure uh, for some of us that attended the African Women Business Entrepreneurs Meeting in Ghana by the US government, uh, we were able to see that what we thought was the limitations, other people were actually succeeding and doing better things about. There are young women in Ghana that are exporting shea butter to other countries. There are people in Nigeria that are exporting uh, dates. That's the Bino, right? There are people in uh, Nasarawa State that are exporting cashew nuts. And these businesses started from an idea. And now they are becoming socially relevant and becoming extremely important to the development of their communities and the global world at the end. So my contribution is that we should not only rely on what we know, but we should try and reach out to learn more about what other people are doing and how best we can contribute what we have to make the world a better place. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much, Kadlora. Let's put our hands together for her quickly. Um, thank you so much. Uh, I think now we are actually diving into the conversation proper. Um, so my first question for Alex would be, Alex, uh, you've said a lot here, uh, same thing with Kadlora, and I understand that one of the most biggest challenge for especially young people is finance. And the question would be, how do we get money? 
how do we get finance as young people? Is there is there a link or is there a source of finance or fund somewhere that you'd want to tell young people about or you want to share with us here today? Where do they get money from? You ask them to do a lot of things for themselves. Where is the money? That would be my question, Alex. Oh, okay. Over to you, please. All right. Uh, I think it's an interesting conversation and it's also a growing concern across the continent. Access to finance remains a big challenge for entrepreneurs, right? But then uh, it's difficult, first of all, because when we look at the traditional or the corporate financings, when we look at microcredit or bank loans and these, it comes with a lot of collateral needs that mostly entrepreneurs starting off from nothing cannot provide, okay? So uh, first of all, as an entrepreneur, you should be able to start small. That's the first part you have to start, right? When you have an idea, you know that the finance, it's very difficult to get. How do you begin with a small idea and you're able to grow that idea to be able to be investment ready, right? Because this is a big challenge. There's an access, these these. There's an access, there's a challenge in access to finance for young entrepreneurs in the continent. And that is true for even entrepreneurs across the globe, right? But this is the secret. Uh, the, the, the challenge is not that there's an absence of finance. That's not the challenge. The challenge is access to finance. It tells you as an entrepreneur that, that, that there's finance already. But how do I access? So you come to tell yourself, how do I get myself ready? How do I become investment ready? How do I have an idea? What problem am I solving within my community that can get me to this level? Because the truth is, uh, when you as an entrepreneur, you are able to solve your own problems, understand the market need. Detach yourself from the passion because sometimes entrepreneurs, when we start, we're so passionate about our idea, we think it's the best idea in the world, right? And we forget about the market value, what need or want do you solve in your community? And at the end of the day, you come across young entrepreneurs, you begin to ask them about their market and their industry. The <laughs> things outside their own thinking and outside their own belief system, right? So that's the secret, right? First of all, you have to acknowledge as a young entrepreneur that there's finance, and how do you access? Number one, I said, you have to start small. You have to be able to grow your initiative. You have to be able to... Sorry, Alex, Alex just a moment. Uh, yeah. Makodi, please, can you mute yourself? I think it's done. All right, uh, as I said, you have to be able to be to be able about a value. Uh, our colleague talked about the value you provide in the community, right? You have to be able to do that. And it is right. We know a few other opportunities that, that exist in the continent. We have the Tony the Tony Alumelo, uh grant for entrepreneurs, which gives about five k to. I think about five thousand or so. I don't have all. I, I'm not sure if the numbers are correct, but I think it. I know it's five thousand dollars. It's it's given to a lot of uh, entrepreneurs across the continent, even within the United States uh, Department, uh, the 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 United Nations. We have the ambassadors grants that happens in various embassies. There are lots and lots of global opportunities that you can compete. You can pitch your ideas. There are a lot. I know. I know for a fact that there are a lot of uh, incubation and acceleration accelerators going in Nigeria and across the continent. So the point is that you want to ask yourself, how am I able to compete? Because if you cannot compete and win the competition, then it makes it becomes very difficult for you to access finance and people cannot trust you because now when people want to give you money, they want to they want to they want to ask themselves the questions when you talk if you're looking at investors right they want to see if i put in x amount if i put in 10k am i able what am i getting they are not people are not just giving you money because they want to give you money again 
But from a realistic perspective, from my experience in the continent, uh, you know, I could remember when I started my business, I was about 19 years old when I started. From my experience, one of the challenges you face as an individual before you get to the point to access the finance pool that is available with, within or outside your country, it's lifestyle, right? You have to be able to cut down your cost a lot. Entrepreneurship is not for everyone. You have to acknowledge that you are starting from a point or from a zero slate. So you have to, again, what I did as an individual, reduce your social lifestyle. You don't have to be the party animal. You don't have to, you don't, you don't, you already want to start a business, but then you don't, you don't have your capital right. And you want all the fancy technologies. You want everything, you know, you want to have the best of everything and that. And sometimes it becomes really very difficult for you. So you have to be able to, hello, my, hello, my you. okay. You have to be, you have to be able to cut. Okay. You have to be able to your lifestyle, cut your cost. And another thing that we can pull resources from that we're sleeping on in the continent is collaboration. Uh, our colleague talked about the CEO syndrome. Everybody wants to be a CEO in Africa. Everybody want to own a business, right? Everybody want to be an entrepreneur. It's a, it's a, it's a new thing. It's a kid, like a new kid on the block, right? But imagine I, I during my college days, when you join social clubs, you could imagine students can put money together up to $50,000, $100,000. Student can contribute to host a student's dinner and party. So I know that, you know, we, we should again begin to consider this in the continent that how do we bring our resources together as friends, as classmates, as college mates, as workmates, how do we pull resources together? Because if we cannot do that, then it becomes very difficult because the challenge we always have to access to finance is your experience. People want to look at your financials. If you're applying today for a hundred k loan, or you you want to go in, you want to go for a, a one uh, one million dollar grant, they want to look at your experience. People want to look at your financials. How much money you've managed that we can trust you with this amount of money? And if you don't have that track record, you cannot provide that traction. Then it's very difficult for you to access that finance. So again, let's begin to pull resources together and contribute our little money, divide our ideas into stages and know that at this stage, this is what we require. But then pretty much for entrepreneurs, uh, when you're starting your cost, try to cut down your cost, your overheads always. We are starting with limited or no capital. At your point, if, 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 if it's your laptop, you need to work. Instead of you wanting to rent an, rent an office space, at the beginning of your business, you can go to you can go to an accelerator, an incubator. Just just be willing and ready to start small, and at the end of the day, you are able to consolidate resources and you are able to have pretty much what is needed, the experience to manage finance, and things will happen. Thank you so much um, for that wonderful insight. Um, Kaleri, you have something to add to that? Yes, yes. Um, I just wanted to add that as an entrepreneur, it's important to always begin with the thought that nobody's coming to save you. If you are about or planning to start a business and the first thing that comes to your mind is who can help me who would I be able to leverage on? It means you're starting wrong. Because at the end, when things don't go well, it falls back to you, the person. So I like the story of the lion. Uh, they say when the lions, when the lioness is about to meet, she allows the lions to have a battle and they fight and the strongest that survives out of the ones that die because they, they fight to death. So the ones that survive gets to meet the lioness. That's entrepreneurship. The person that persevere the most 
get to benefit from his hard work. A lot of times we hear people like the pres uh, past president of Nigeria talking about how he started without shoes. And people are always laughing at, at, at accomplished people because we go like, ah, these people always have some very funny, funny stories, but it's true. They appreciate where they are today and they work hard because they started from nothing. So it's important for you to understand that if you're starting a business and everything that comes to your mind in your planning is how to access money, it means you're starting wrong. Everything does not start with your ability to access money. Everything starts with your, your ability to understand what you are not good in, what you cannot sell, what you cannot continue to sell because you are not passionate about. A lot of times people uh, insist that you have to have passion because if you're not passionate about something, you won't be able to persevere through the hard times. So when you're really, really interested in what you're selling, if you're really passionate about what you're selling, you would stay longer in the business. And even when it fails, you would be able to start all over again. But when you just copy and paste business because everybody else is doing it, or you're doing it because you want quick money and it fails, you would not be able to come back and start all over again because you don't have the passion to see through it. So on the issue of how can young people get finances, as, as I said, everything does not start with your access to money. Everything starts with you understanding what you can leverage on. Even if you have money, you are buying something, right? And that's something, somebody made it. Somebody made toothpicks. He started with trees. I'm not sure if the person went around and bought trees, but I'm saying everything does not start with a huge capital. You can start where you are, no matter how little it is. Even if it's an idea, someone else can key into that and start before you can work for the person. He can never do it as perfect as you want to be or as idealistic as what you're thinking in your head, but it could be something similar. Just like I said, and just like Alex said, a lot of times we're into this CEO syndrome thing and it takes away so much that we'll be able to achieve if we work and liaise with other people to achieve where we want to get to. So liaise on your time, you can sell your time, you can sell your capacity. Some people are really good in tech. A lot of young people are good with tech but they don't know that they can easily just walk into organizations and say, hey, I can build websites and submit a proposal or a letter that says, please contact me if you need uh, me to do any graphic design or these are opportunities. But a lot of people are sitting down and waiting for a break that would never come to them. Sometimes we have to be the ones to go an extra step to sell those skills we have to be able to get the money we need to start of what we plan to do. So that's the contribution I have. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, please, for those of you who are currently joining us via our Facebook page, American Space in Nigeria or US Mission Nigeria uh, Facebook page, please, uh, please feel free to send in your question. There, we'll pick them up there and throw it uh, right uh, to our speakers here on this platform. And for our participants across our network of American species, not just in Nigeria, but our uh, a larger part of West Africa, please feel free to send in your question either in the chat box here for us to pick it up and send it to um, our speakers for today. You can as well use your virtual hand uh, in your respective spaces to indicate that you want to ask a question and we'll give you the opportunity to also uh, speak to our speakers directly. Um, let, let me ask these last questions before I pass it on to our participants. Um, like you all know, um, the larger the larger percentage, about sixty five to seventy five percent of our of people in Africa are largely uh young people, sixty five to seventy percent actually young people, and in most times they are being told, wait for your time. Wait for your time. And indeed, they are waiting. And you will all agree with me, and that is why we have a large chunk of people who are unemployed uh, in Africa. For this group of young people who have continued to wait for their time, most of them think that there are actually no opportunities there. Are there opportunities for young people? I will start with uh, Kadora, then um, I will pass it on to Alex. I feel like you're hitting the spot and directing this question to me because 
uh, this was actually said to us some years ago that we should wait for our time while we're trying to do the Not Too Young to Run campaign. But then I will say it, our time would never come. And if you're out there and waiting that uh, policies will be put into place and chairs will be brought more to the table, then you are thinking wrong. For some of us, we started up volunteering and ended up getting jobs and gather the money from the jobs we we're doing to be able to start the businesses we have. And eventually when it got to a standstill, we sought out other businesses that did not require much capital than the ones we started and started all over again and continued volunteering until it led us to where we are today. I'll say it all over again. It's important to understand that your intellectual capacities and the skills you have would give you money that the business you might start, start as an individual might not. And I'm talking about this from a personal experience. Uh, I would say the last three jobs I had came to me based on, hey, can you help us do this? Uh, we have this uh, problem we want to address, we want to put up a project. How do you think we can go about this? And then we collaborated and we put in a project and it became a job and someone else recommended me. I will keep insisting. A lot of times we downplay the significance of just being available or networking. The most important part for us right now to liaise on is collaboration. I don't think our time will come or our time will be announced anytime soon, but it's important for us to create a network or a society where, because if you look at it, if you look at it, if the president, if a president gets elected, what does he do? He changes the cabinets, right? You will hear that he employed someone he worked with 30 years ago. He employs someone that, you know, but then we fail to look at it in a bigger picture as young people. He is recommending people that have ensured their trust to him, that he has worked with that are reliable, dependable, and available. And you can only have that when you build networks and relationships. So a lot of times, especially now that we are having the CEO Chris syndrome going around, it's important that we understand that nobody is an island. You cannot achieve everything and be successful alone. Everybody wants to own everything and be the first. You wouldn't go far. So when you create a society where you can easily reach out to your networks and get things done, then you won't have limitations in terms of where you can reach as a person in business or as a person that intends to start a business. So I think that that is my contribution for that. Thank you so much. Over to you, Chief Alex, please. I think that uh, Khan, Khan talked about a couple of interesting things, right? But then uh, let's, let's look at it from this viewpoint. Every time we say there are no opportunities, it's because we are comparing our continent with other places, right? We are comparing it to the Europe, we are comparing it to... But then if we can just switch off the comparing light and look within our countries, our communities, there's, there's never a day that you can say there's, there are no opportunities in your community, right? We acknowledge, we acknowledge the reality that we have limited opportunities. But then again, we have to accept the fact that opportunities everywhere in the world are limited in a way, are not meant for everyone. Because if you go, if you travel across the world, you we all have shared problems. You go to the US, you have homeless people. You have people, jobless people everywhere you go. Yeah, the percentages, the numbers as compared to our continent might be different, right? But this is the problem. All of us want to have a seat on the table. And that's a fight. That's a crash we're having. Nobody wants to be the carpenter that creates the table. Nobody wants to be the carpenter that creates the chair. Nobody wants to be in the kitchen and say, you know what? I, I don't want to sit on the table, right? I just want to be in the kitchen. I want to be serving those who want to sit at the table. Then you become relevant. So we're looking for when we... When we're searching for opportunities, we're not just, again, to be culturally accustomed to things that we know are the fact. 
and which is limiting our continent in terms of the entrepreneurship growth because people are just looking at the street, the normal, the, the, the professions or the careers or the sectors that, that have already excelled. But nobody wants to do the dirty job. Nobody wants to. And, and interestingly, people want to be called the CEO. They don't, they don't care how much you pay them, right? And what is the philosophy? What about the philosophy of call me a janitor and pay me well? That's what matters. So there are a lot of opportunities within the continent. But then how, how do we harness and leverage the opportunities we have to maximize it? But pretty much about us young people who are in the majority in the continent. And also, I know for a fact that a lot of young people in the continent have also excelled and are in critical and important positions, whether it's in the public or private sectors. How are we removing barriers for other young people to get it a lot more easier than we got it? So because you struggled a lot to find an opportunity, and you eventually break through and you now have a big establishment. You, you want every young person to go through the same suffering and pain as you did. And that is also a big problem that, that that's frustrate people. So how do you make it easy for those coming after you, right? And, and, and that is what we're looking at. It's about your purpose. What value are we bringing on? What value are we bringing on? How, how are we expanding? How are we creating opportunities are not coming from heaven they are created by humans it's what it's our ability to look at things and turn them into something that our community and others can benefit from so this is what we have to this is what we we have to be uh uh open our eyes to in the continent as africans that yes we have opportunities and and again if you look at the continent what about cross-border opportunities as well Sometimes we just look at, okay, this is Nigeria, this is Sierra Leone, this is Gambia, but how are we leveraging collaborations across uh, across borders in our continent? How are we networking? How are we connecting to people to another? Okay, I, I, if I can break through in Nigeria, maybe I have to collaborate to somebody else that have a market need. Because if to say, for instance, if you want to start a tech company in, 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 in Nigeria, you have like thousands or hundreds of other companies who are driving in the market, who have a market share. So you have to compete to get them, right? But then for to say, if you come to, if you say you're collaborating with countries like, let's say, Sierra Leone, it's, it's a smaller country, and not much is happening in terms of, the competition is always less as compared to Nigeria, right? How do you, we collaborate within that and see that we're able to, to leverage? But again, another key thing is, is leadership. Right, it's servant leadership. Do we care about others? That is key. How do we care about others? How do we create opportunities for others? What are you in entrepreneurship? What are you uh, interesting? I tell people entrepreneurship is a mindset, it's not just for business owners, it's a problem solving mindset. It's when you use your God given creativity and talent to provide a need or want to a society, right? So, that, that kind of leadership you have in, in terms of how you're able to to leverage all of those things. And that is the opportunity we're creating. But I, this is it. This is how I want to leave. Uh, I, I want to close on, on this. The biggest opportunity anyone can have in this world is when you wake up every morning healthy. If you, if you, if you, if you understand the power that lies in waking up every morning, you embrace life. And, and that is entrepreneurship is you have to be it has to be fit based in a way because we are speaking this morning i slept i had a long sleep last night i traveled uh, out of the city i came back i had a long sleep if i didn't wake up this morning i was not going to be here talking right so that is what as long as the sun shine you see you wake up every morning you have to have that vibration within you that you know what as long as i wake up i'm healthy I'm going out, I'm going to do what I can do, and I will succeed. Thank you very much. That was a wonderful uh, submission. Um, so let's quickly take questions. Uh, please, you can use the virtual hand to indicate if you have a question for us. Uh, let's go right away to uh, American Corner in Calabar. Calabar, please unmute yourself and ask your question, please.
Kalaba over to you. After Kalaba, we'll take Bauchi. Hello, everybody. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, good morning. I'm Paul. I'm the Good morning, our amazing speaker. Thank you very much. And um, I have um, a question for the session. I was spoken so much about collaboration. And I wanted to ask how many practical ways that you discuss actually all about effective collaboration and partnership because a lot of people don't start business and uh, once they start business, they have this one spirit of competition with other people doing similar businesses with them. So is there a way that they can actually collaborate more effectively? Secondly, I wanted to ask a question that relates to the opportunities that I talked about that are available for young people. And today we have um or people going to tech, some of them are doing things like um, copywriting. And we see that AI is actually taking some of these jobs and making those opportunities uh, more, more um, scanty. And most of them that learn tech areas now do not have those the same jobs. So, how can they evolve and leverage these uh, AI trends to their advantages? And lastly, the other question is talking about this new trend that's coming about. Should entrepreneurs should be focused on just cash or just on sustainable living? Because first of all, um, most of the driving force is just, um, just want to make money. But if you really feel about you're only making money, you're almost never making money. But now, should the entrepreneurship change to focusing on sustainable livelihoods, maybe getting their food and um, shelter in place? So, those are my questions. Thank you. So, I'm Kennedy Opportunity from. Um, across the United States. I'm also from the Rio Bay International Network um, across the United States. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Um, Alex, I will allow you to take that up immediately. Uh, if there's something to add, uh, hardly we'll do that right away. Uh, uh, thanks a lot for that. You talked about the practical ways to collaboration. First of all is uh, understanding your purpose, right? And what, what do you want? What problem do you want to solve? And that's number one, when you understand your purpose and the problem you want to solve and the market need that is available for, to solving that problem, and you come into understanding your own, your own strengths and weaknesses, you now know that this is what I have to do. This is what we have to provide. But then I'm limited. And, and this is something all of us have to acknowledge. You cannot be all smart in the world. No matter how smart you are, you have limitations. You don't know everything. So when you recognize that I don't have this ability or capacity, and not, not that you're stupid or you're not intelligent, it's no, or you're not serious. It's just the fact that you cannot have everything. So when you acknowledge your strengths and your weaknesses, then you begin to find people who can complement you. And one of the key, one of the secrets again, you have to look at co collaboration. Don't be intimidated at, by people who are more intelligent than you. And, and that's what happens sometimes when young entrepreneurs, when people want to collaborate, they want to form a team of people who, who they are all who are less smarter than them. How can you try? So you're finding people who have super strength, who can complement or who can even mentor you, who whom you can learn from. And, and that is one practical way. Just let go of your ego. Uh, uh, just forget about the syndrome of, I want to have 100% of a company that that has a, that has that is zero in value. But let me have a 5 or 10% of a company that has the potential to become a multi-million dollar company. But also, equally, you are able to create that impact, right? And, and, and uh, in terms of partnership, always leverage. Try as much as you can. Reach out. Reach out to many people connect to them, know what is happening, understand your ecosystem, your community, be be present in your community. For instance, if you live in Lagos, if you live in Abuja, if you live in Freetown and Sierra Leone, understand what opportunities do I have in Lagos? Who are the players in Lagos? Who are the stakeholders? Who are the, who is doing what? Who is doing that? If you if you don't know all of these uh, basics, they are very difficult to be talking about. I I want to mention one. You want to mention one that he said. Sorry about that. FM, please, can you mute yourself, please? 
So as I said, that's what you have to understand, the opportunities that are available, the privileges, the, the and again, but uh, look at the low-hanging fruit, right? Low-hanging fruit, things that you can access, try as much as you can. And in collaborating and fostering partnership, don't be agitated by people turning you down. Don't don't be, reach out to people if they say, no, I can't help, no, we, we are not available. That's not the stopping point. It means that those people, first of all, they now know that you exist. They now know that what you do. Maybe it will come a time they'll say, ah, oh, maybe somebody reach out to us who was offering X, Y, Z. But we, they, now I, we know we need this thing. Let's reach out. So you always build synergies, right? And he talked about AI versus uh, the limited opportunities. And this is, this, is, this is the thing entrepreneurs should know about. Yes, we acknowledge the fact that we are fast moving into a tech a tech wall, everything is going technology. But even us on Zoom this morning, even us having this conversation, it's a huge opportunity we are leveraging that technology has provided us. Maybe this, this was, before this time, maybe we, we, if we needed all of us to convert, to have this conversation, we'll say, okay, I, need, I needed to travel to Nigeria, for instance, to just have this meeting, to just have this conversation. But I, I'm right here seated in, in Sierra Leone and we're having this conversation. That is a huge opportunity. And, and those are the little tools, or those are the little technologies that we, would, we should be able to harness and leverage. What AI does is, is that artificial intelligence make entrepreneurs to be more smarter. It makes work lighter. So you have to be able to understand that. It does not take away any opportunity from you as an entrepreneur, but then you should be able to understand how you use the tools to be able to to or to have more efficiency in your work, to be to be able to have more in terms of performance, in terms of delivery, in terms of just solving the problem better, right? So AI is not versus any opportunity. Let's understand. Let's let's learn as much as we can. So that is why, as an entrepreneur. One of the key things that you should focus on is research. Things are trending. Always update and upgrade your knowledge on things. Don't just be hostile and take the traditional position. Ah, AI is coming to take over. No, AI is not. Because hear this. AI is not being made by AI. AI is being made by entrepreneurs. So just imagine for a second to say, okay, you know what? I'm going to be the entrepreneur that, that are going to make the AI now. AI is not made by AI, as I said. AI is being made by entrepreneurs. So even with the escalation or the expansion of AI, entrepreneurs are booming and making a lot of cash and impact in the continent and across the world with AI, right? Uh, lastly, you talked about cash versus sustainable living. You see the thing about entrepreneurship, I tell people, it's not in straight jackets. There is no rule. There is no, nothing is wrong for you to say, I'm starting off as an entrepreneur from a hustle point of view. Me, I don't want to create impact in society or anything. I just want to survive. I just want to have money and live. Because that is your why. Why are you doing what you're doing? And because you want to make money. And now, when you understand how to make those money and the profit that you're focused on for your own sustainable living, you now know that I have to provide a value that is competitive in the marketplace. So eventually, there is no way you can blow off, you can you can create huge impact and make big profits in, in entrepreneurship without creating value or impact. Because every product or service you're providing today, other people are doing it or have done it before you, or they are complementary products already in the market. So if you have to replace them, if you have to take over, it means you're coming with an added value you're adding value to the existing uh, status quo. So either way, just own your story. Uh, be, be consistent with what you want to do. And at the end of the day, it comes with a lot of struggle, but also a lot of wins, and you'll be able to succeed. Thank you so much. Um, Kaliri, do you, do, you, do you want to add something? Yes, just uh, quickly to add to what Chief Alex had said on the issue of collaboration. Um, once you find out about people that are mm -hmm. that are doing what you are doing or that have 
either the time to contribute into what you're selling or the products you want to buy, for example. It's important to just draft a memorandum of understanding. Have an understanding, have a contract ready. That's clearly because I, I think some of the complications that comes with collaboration is understanding our limitations and understanding what everybody stands to benefit from what is available. So when you have that figure out in the beginning, it makes it a bit easier for the business to, to grow with the partners you intend to collaborate with. Another thing is uh, when we're talking about opportunities for young people in business, we're talking about collaboration still. Because if you're talking about entrepreneurship, you have to liaise or rely on your networks to feed you information about opportunities available. It means that your network has to be tight. It means that you have to re rely on research. You have to keep on, because a lot of times we have all these gadgets, but we fail to use them for the right purposes. For example, there are opportunity decks. Uh, Chief Alex have talked about the grants, uh, opportunities available even by the Department of State. And uh, I mentioned Relief Web International earlier. Uh, we have opportunity decks, we have the Ashoka funders, we have global giving, it's endless, it end, it's endless. And when you take out your time and go through this site, you would understand that they don't only have grants available, but they also have opportunities for training for those of us that intend to learn more before we invest into a particular business. So what we're saying is opportunity comes in diverse forms. So it's up, it's up for the person to understand what kind of opportunity is looking for and then try to research about how he can get the best of what's in it. I think that is for the opportunity. And on the issue of sustainability living and sustainable change, I think Alex has answered it perfectly clearly. If you want to start up a business and it's just about getting your income and taking care of your immediate needs, it's perfectly fine. You're still contributing to the gross, gross outcome of the community and the whole country. If you decide that you saw a need in your community and you want to create a business that would address the needs, for example, a lot of people are into uh, pure water processing companies because they don't have clean water in their communities. So they sell water. Fine, if that's what you want to do. If in your community you realize that the business you want to start up cannot give you the quality of living you desire, you can look into your community and decide what you can see that you can change and make money out of, but everything being equal, just be passionate about whatever it is you want to sell or engage in. And I think that is enough to drive you towards achieving your desired goal. Thank you so much, Kadira. So let's quickly uh, take a question from Bauchi. Uh, we need to be quick about this. Uh, Bauchi, I think after Bauchi, we're going to take, I uh, think there is a space in BCWOE. Uh, we'll take that, then we'll go to duty. So quickly, Bachi, please on mute and ask your question, please. You have to be quick about that. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you are listening to us. Uh, thank you for the presentation. It's, uh, it's a moral boost to us. Uh, what I want to ask is people like us as a young man, a young entrepreneur, we need mentorship. We like mentorship. If we have mentorship, it will guide us uh, to put more courage and confidence to power the little skills we have. And the other aspects I want to uh, request, those opportunities for volunteering. If you have an opportunity to volunteer, it will be an, as a grant for you to test on your skills and your capacity. Uh, if you're able to scale through, I believe it will build you based on the presentation or resource persons have admit. Uh, the, the life testimony about their success is, depends on their volunteering, uh, collaboration, and others. I believe it will help us because we enjoy good understanding with the directors across the American space. They are so kind to us. This opportunity of this entrepreneurship training, they call us to come and partake. Most of us don't even know about it. Uh, that is all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Adri, do you want to respond first? Oh, yes. If I got him clearly, I just want to be sure I got the uh, question correctly. We are talking about uh, mentorship in entrepreneurship. Yes. 
Okay. I think uh, for the for the sake of um, time and uh, because of the kind of um, program we're having, it's it's important to for some of us. I'm sure there are a lot of us that are available today that might know one or two. Uh, mentorship programs or opportunities that are out there for people that want to vary into particular businesses because it would be broad for me to start suggesting especially as I'm not sure what type of business we're talking about or what kind of opportunity in mentorship we're talking about so I would say if it's in, if it's okay maybe after the program if we can share some of those information to the participants, then fine. But in the basics of just understanding what business is all about, and then the dynamics of uh, money management, I think it's something that uh, we can find online on the humanitarian aid uh, website, I think Academy, humanitarian aid Academy, they have an app, they call it Kaya. If you're on Kaya, I think you can get business trainings for free. You can get uh, empowered on a lot of opportunities in terms of project planning, project management, and what have you. I think that is what I can say in regards to mentorship for entrepreneurs. Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, Chief Alex, do you want to add something quickly? Okay. Uh, just quick word. Uh, ment mentorship is very important, and we all need mentorship at every level of our businesses or our investments, right? Uh, but again, one thing that is really very important as young entrepreneurs, we should focus on peer mentorship, right? Uh, find so much value within your circle and your peer, people that are accessible, people that you can reach out to. Look at mentorship in this form, right? When you're in school, maybe you're in junior secondary school or senior secondary school, you have your classmates. You would basically know that if it's mathematics, when you're seated in the class, you all know you have a colleague or a classmate that understands mathematics more than all of you in that class. And, and when often we have exams or we we have we we want to understand the subject matter proper, we go to them to say, you know what, teach there, even though you are seated in this same class, both of you are taught the same day and within the same time but they understood the concept better than you. So peer mentorship is very, very important in the journey, learning the value within your circle. Because if we just focus on mentor, celebrity mentorship to say he's the most famous CEO or he's the most renowned person and I want to get mentorship from the person, the mistake we do is that we most times we don't have access to them. They don't give you time, they don't have. So when you're starting off as a startup entrepreneur, find value in peer mentorship. Seek advice or counseling from your colleagues, your friends who you know understand the subject matter better. Even within your family, you can find mentorship within your family members. And now, as you grow bigger and as you get this establishment, uh, bigger doors or celebrity mentorships will open up to you. And this is it. When you have good family and peer mentorship, you you don't run after how do I call it iconic mentorship or from celebrities or established CEOs. Sometimes they will invite you. They learn about what you're doing. They find out you you cross paths. You meet in a space and they they see that what you're doing is interesting and you build a reputation over time. And they will say, you know what, I want to help you out. Let me now. It, it's it's more important when it comes from them genuinely and they will give you time to understand. Another thing you talked about volunteering is very important, right? Uh, if you want to start off as an entrepreneur, sometimes if you, we don't have, we all would always have financial constraints, no matter the level you are at with your investment, uh, you want to scale up, you, you need finance. But sometimes when you start off, just learn. I could remember years back when I started, right, in, in the multimedia sector, there has been a time when I, I, when I was broadcasting in my early, early days, I would sleep on a table for, for over two years because I was doing a program at 5 a.m. in the morning and I had to go there and do production. So, so I would sleep in the studio on the table because I needed to learn certain skills. You you need to call up people and say, you know what, I can I come and help? Can I just want... Because you have to be able to build up your capacities and see what happens, right? And... and 
And as an entrepreneur, you also again want to, you don't only want to focus on your visual image, like you want to look like an entrepreneur, that's not, but you have to focus on your mental image. How much knowledge and idea do you have? Because what is most embarrassing is that if you do not volunteer for opportunities in life, what is more embarrassing is when you meet people who are in who are established in an industry you want to enter, and they now start to have conversation with you, and you look very clueless about that industry. You don't even know what exists in the industry. Then how are they going to help you? So and all of these things will, you learn a lot from volunteering, giving your time, and just connecting yourself to your community. Thank you so much for that valuable contribution, Alex. Um, now let's take a question from BCWA. Please allow me to ask your question. Yes, good afternoon, Daniel. Good afternoon, Alex and um, Katura. Thank you for sharing so much inspiration with us this morning. And now it's afternoon. I don't know, am I audible? Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, thank you very much. We have two questions. One is from me. And um, I would like to say that our youths, looking at Nigerian perspective, have a lot of dreams, visions, goals when it comes to entrepreneurship. But I found out that our youths are not able to contend with the challenges they come up with while they are trying to bet their vision. So my question is, what would be the best advice to our youths, knowing that we have such a rich young population and we want them to be as entrepreneurial as possible? What would be the best advice to the youth when they count when they encounter failures in their in on their way to success? They are not able to wait to see this dream come to fruition. I used to tell them, try to see the end result, try to see where the, the success story before you get there. But sometimes they, they, the challenges of a lot of times over, overweigh them and they are not able to see these visions and dreams come to fruition. So I would like to know from our facilitators today, what would be their best advice to our youth while they struggle down the way to bet their individual goals and visions. Then the second question is from one of the participants here. He wants, he wants, he wants to know, um, how he can set up a, he called it transport business, but I, 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 I think it's, he's talking about having, owning a courier business. What advice he can get if he wants to own a courier business to maybe send things out of the shores of Nigeria to other African countries or to the global space. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, Yes, uh, let's go straight to Kadura and see hear her response first. Then we'll pass it on to Alex. He has something to add. Over to you, Kadura, please. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I don't know if you were with us from the beginning, but if I remember correctly, I was trying to share an experience with us earlier where I was talking about the encounter we had some weeks ago when we were doing a program, and we asked young people. What happens? What what when when what? Uh, sorry, I think it again. What happens when what you envision doesn't come to reality? What happens when what you put all your efforts into doesn't materialize? And I I say it with all uh, without regret that I'm happy that over the years our universities our higher institutions have put in entrepreneurship as a cost for young people to learn about what businesses are. But unfortunately, we are so theoretically inclined in terms of reading books about what entrepreneurship is and then failing to concentrate about what happens when it falls or when it fails. How can we teach people how to fall forward, right? So now, it's 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 it, it has to be a shift as i said earlier the biggest challenge for a young person is falling forward and i said something earlier i said if you start up a business or for example uh, you want to own let's say a gas plant and you know it's a long term dream and let me use myself as a person i'm a lady let's say for a young girl that wants to 
start a gas plant as a lady. You already know the limitations a young woman has in our community, especially in Nigeria. I'm happy that you're also Nigerian, so you understand the demographic of what I'm trying to explain. And the reality is there. It's, it's obvious that as a young woman, when you go to the banks, they would not, they would consider men far earlier than you when it comes to giving grants or loan for reasons based known to them. We already know about social exclusion for women in terms of business opportunities, okay? And then another thing is, I would want to begin small. Let me explain why. If my goal is to become a success, successful gas plant owner, and I start from being a hairdresser, and I start saving money to become a hairdresser, and eventually a pandemic like COVID happened, COVID, the pandemic happened, and I use all my resources to take care of my immediate needs because of the pandemic, it means I have to start all over again, right? It means after the pandemic, just like Chief Alex have said, just like we've said in the beginning, I would begin to consider volunteering or going to learn a new skill to be able to start all over again, to be able to save money, to take me a step forward to where I'm headed. One of the challenges we're having as young people, and I'm saying this because I see it all over when, when we go around trying to understand the challenges we're having as young people, is our ability to easily give up. A lot of people are, are going through a lot of mental challenges, especially now the economy is, is hard on everyone. Young people are facing so many challenges from expectation, from family, from parents. And then, you know, the world itself is diverting into another tech world. A lot of people are struggling to be able to afford even laptops that they can use to learn all these things. We're talking about AI. So my, my advice is, as young people, if you begin a business and it fails and it doesn't materialize into what you want, start again. Take the risks and start again. If it fails, start again. If it doesn't work, start again. But as you're starting again, just like Alex said, find out about other people that are either your age mates, older or younger, that are into the same business you're in, and then learn from their mistakes and build on what you have. But then don't give up. Just start again, start again, all over again, and then basically you will get to where you want to be. And then uh, you asked a question about... Uh, about a career opportunity. I, I think I will leave that for Alex to understand because I didn't really get the question very well. All right, thank you. I think he was talking about starting uh, a transport business, how to go about it. I think about, I'll just pass that on to Alex. Alex, over to you, please. Alex, are you there? Yes, hello. Yeah, hello. sorry. Okay. Uh no, Kadika, the, the Lira talked a lot about uh, uh considering failure, right? Uh I think as an entrepreneur, you should be able to understand the industries you're entering into, right? And you 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 also are able to understand that there are a lot of risks involved in it. But then you have to be able to de-risk what you do. So if you understand properly your industry, then you begin to realize that you, you will not encounter any failure in your journey. Because the point is, entrepreneurship gives you, as if you want to focus on it from a practical point of view, is that we take it as a football, right? When you as a, as a coach or the players, you have a match, you have a, maybe Arsenal and Manchester, they are playing. The goal, the motive, the aim of that match is to walk away with three points. And that's why when you watch football, you see they can score a goal from every angle. The coach is not just saying because you are the attacker or you are the, you are the striker, you are the forward, you should score from this angle. No, they create chances. As the match, match is playing right, the more tactical the opponent becomes the more strategic. Sometimes you see the changing formations. Sometimes you see they can take out attackers, they bring in defenders, they can strengthen the midfield based on the match of the day. And that is what entrepreneurs should understand. You have to understand 
the market of today. Can I thrive on this market? If you cannot, entrepreneurship gives you the leverage to pivot. Pivot separate simply means that I thought this idea can work, but if it's not working, I can change it to another idea. And sometimes we start up with ideas that gives us clue to get to the real idea that we, we are divinely connected to. So you have to be able to understand all of those things. So you can pivot and relaunch into another idea. But then taking the data, taking the knowledge you gain from this initiative or idea that didn't go as planned, but then you, you had a lot of experience. Now, maybe when you are creating that idea, you are seated on your laptop or in your incubator with your friends, you're just hallucinating about how fancy the market or the problem should be. But now when you get to the market real time, you learn different. So every journey, pay attention to what your 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 what 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 is being taught to you. What is what is the day teaching you, right? So if it if not, you can pivot, you can change, you can relaunch. I tell people sometimes you stop an idea. And, and this is the thing, yeah? The consistency every entrepreneur should have for you not to consider yourself a failure is you have to be consistent to your purpose and not the idea. If this idea is not working, stop. Because sometimes people can lose, people can, people can, can lose uh, 1K in a business, 2K, but the reality is it's not only in the money, but they see that this thing is not working. They keep spending more money. And that's where that leads to failure because you're not understanding what the, the, the numbers are teaching you. So it's okay to change. It's okay to stop. It's okay, it's okay to quit for some time. If you think that you need to build up more capacity and you can always come back. Because the thing about entrepreneurship is an infinite journey. It does not stop. Whether it's a startup, whether it's an established business, whether it's, a, it's you, you're scaled up and you're huge, you've seen all over the world, big or small companies can crash. We also, naturally, the climate, climate change, our environment, on other like external factors, we all, COVID-19 brought in. Well, nobody thought that. There's no market research that say COVID-19 was coming. <laughs> you understand? We saw for instance, an industry like the the aviation industry, which that was shut down completely. So it means that things can happen, but you are able to adjust to the realities of the day. And uh, uh, she asks about when you're starting a career service in terms of um, exporting things across uh, the continent from Nigeria. I think research, right? Data, data, there's a lot of data, whether it's data from the World Bank, whether it's from the IMF, whether it's from the African Union, whether it's from uh, your uh, your commerce industry in the in your country. There are a lot of data available, and and you have to be you have to be able to understand these numbers and research. And I tell people. The reason why you should be research based as an entrepreneur is not that you're believing all of the facts or you're being limit, you limit yourself by the numbers or by this information. But you just want to have an understanding of what operates in the industry I want to go into. How many businesses have failed in this industry? What what, what was their factors of exiting the market? What are which ones are thriving? What is their unique uh uh, uh what is the, the competitive value they have in the market? What's a unique value proposition you can bring in into the market space? So when you understand all of this, and that's why I said, you should be as an entrepreneur, be patient. Don't be in haste to go to the market. Don't be in haste to just be, to just go out there and start doing business. Sit back sometimes at home in your bedroom, understand so much about your industry. And that is also doing business. Doing business is not just selling the market, right? So, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much, Archip Alex. Um, let us quickly take a question from um, Dute in Chicago State, winner in America, Dute. Dute, please can you unmute and ask your question? After that, we'll take Makodi. Then I think um, we're going to take a question from Sierra Leone. American show, Kenama. Uh, just say, can you unmute and ask your question quickly? We don't have time. 
So we'll take all of the questions, then we'll come back uh, to our speakers to respond. We'll take all of them from the different locations. Good afternoon. My question here is that, does a product can be a product without reaching the final consumer? And if that is the case, what kind of tools can we be used to inform the customer and the users the existence of your product in the market? Thank you. My name is Adam Suleiman from Window on, on America. Do it. All right, thank you. Uh, let's take the next question from Makoni. Makoni, what to you? Can hear you, Makodi. It's muted. We still can't hear Makodi. Makodi, uh, please uh, sort out the technical issues over there and let us know once you're ready. So let's let's go to American share, Kenama, Sorello. Please unmute and ask your questions, please. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Musa. Let's go to America. Okay. Good afternoon. I've learned a lot uh, about entrepreneurship. But my question is. Okay. okay. Hello. Hello. But my question here is uh, in Sri Lanka, I have learned a lot about entrepreneurship. Well, my question is yes i i think the challenge we're having is there are double login in your location somebody will need to log out please so there there is actually a lot of echo in your background somebody will need to log out please okay, can you try speaking and so we can hear you Okay, can you hear me? Marco, the wait, wait, please. We're taking, we're taking uh, the Australia now. Australia, so over to you, please. Yeah, you are muted. Please just unmute yourself and speak. Okay, I've learned a lot about entrepreneurship, and we are it focused on Africa. The challenges the African people face in terms of establishing a business or to carry out business activities, and uh, like money, time, support, effectiveness, cooperative society responsibility. Well, my question here is: In Sierra Leone, we hardly to have support of carrying out our own our, of carrying out business. I want to know, like a youth like me, if I want to establish a business, what kind of support that I have to go in in terms to establish a business? Thank you so the much. Support, the, support, the support that I have to go through so I can carry out my entrepreneurship activities in the society. All right, thank you so much for asking. Um, we will get back to you. Uh, at the moment, we're taking all of the questions so that we can try and round up. 
Okay, let's go to Makodi. Now, Makodi, on mute and ask your question, please. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, go on, please. Um, I've heard a lot about entrepreneurship. And I, have, I want to ask a question about, we talked about uh, collaboration. And then, but there was no much light thrown about um, legal framework on going into collaboration. Because there should be, like, we should be enlightened on how to actually go into collaboration in terms of contract, and then not bringing an idea and then maybe co-founding or partnership with someone. And then at the end of the day, there's no good legal framework to back your stick in such partnership? That's my question. All right, uh, our speakers, let's go, uh, let's pick this quickly. Uh, let's start with Alex. Alex, will start with you right away, then we'll go back to Kadura. Alex, yeah, I, think I, I think I was unable to get the question a bit. I was unable to. Yeah, he was referring to a collaboration. Uh, what was the framework? That was the last question. What was the framework as regards uh, partnership across uh, border countries? Uh, if I get that correctly. Yeah. Uh, what I, I think that, yeah, I wouldn't recommend any specific... I wouldn't recommend any specific framework in terms of how do you, what you need to do or what not to do. First of all, is that uh, I think Cardilera talked about uh, knowing what you want, right? So if I want to reach out, it's understanding who you are, building your reputation. That's very important as a person, build your reputation. And uh, knowing what you need, right? Reach out to you, hey, Alex, what's up? I want us to collaborate. And uh, yes, that's, that's a vague thing. Collaborate on what? What do you need currently? And know who to contact for what you need, right? And I tell people a lot about uh sometimes you you come across people, you share con uh contact with them, but these people are very busy, they are super well-established executives, right? And now you're just sending them, please follow my Facebook page. If <laughs> you're you're misusing your contacts, right? Learn to understand the people, the value you have in your network and when to pull the trigger on each value, when to reach out to these people. But again, beyond that, the more be human. If I want to network and collaborate with Kadlira, I hope I'm calling the name right. With Kadlira, first of all, you want to build relationship with people. It, I'm not just sending her a message because I need something today or next week. No, we build relationship with them sometimes. That's the best way to collaborate with people. Care about who they are as a person. Keep your network going. Have interactions with them. Sometimes check on their businesses, how they're doing. Just be connected humanly. Because sometimes just sharing the email addresses or having our contacts is, does not qualify that you are a member of my network. But do people think about you? Do you care about them? And that is how you build. And don't be in haste to build this hundred pool of network that you cannot manage if you if you keep your circle small people who are value okay it's three four five people build that network and eventually they become a family people reach out to you people care the thing is that people are more human than they are not they are not ai humans are not they are not like a refrigerator or a cup that you can just use right when you meet them People are very human. When they know you care about them, you're connected to them, you build synergies and relationships, they'll open up opportunities to you. They'll open up. Sometimes it's not, they'll even call you up and share things to you that you don't know they exist, right? They'll introduce you to people, they'll connect you to people. So I think if there, if we should, I wouldn't call it a framework, but then let's learn to be. Let's not just be users of our network, people in our contact. Yeah, I just want to use them and to just care about them, connect to them and build genuine relationships that you do not necessarily have to have uh, uh, the picture that this relationship will lead me. Kadilira put it rightly that value people you meet. It can be your biggest person today or sometimes even tomorrow. You might look at Kadlura today, Kadlura today, you might say, ah, no, she cannot give me 
Yeah, you are muted. We can't hear you. You are muted. We can't hear you. Uh, Chief Alex, I think we, we lost you on the way. We, uh, I think we didn't get your last thought. Yeah, can you hear me, Chief Alex? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. I think we lost your last thought. Oh, sorry about it. So, so I was just saying, as Kalira said rightly, don't take people for granted. You don't know what will become out of them. Value people you meet and genuinely contribute to what they can. And sometimes voluntarily ask. It's not easy. It's here about collaboration. It's only about taking away from people. You want to collaborate with Kalira. Sometimes you ask, what can I do to help your business? I have X, Y, Z skills. Is it important to you? And it's not only about what you want. It's about serving people. Because if you put yourself out there and you're concerned and connected about them, okay, you're doing this. I think I have X, Y, Z skill that I can add up to this. She's not asking already, but you're volunteering to build network and a, and a collaborative relationship. And she might wake up one morning and say, you know what, I have X, Y, Z opportunity, but I'm not sure that I will show up. I, I recommended you. And now that you collaborate genuinely, you have to care about people, what they do, what they stand for, and be able to support them and not only for you to collect support from people. Thank you so much, Mr. Alex. Um, Kadra, do you, do you have something to add? Yeah, I mean, um, just to add a little, because uh, he literally said what we said earlier. Paraventure that uh, you get to a point where your ideas begin to materialize into cash. You can now decide to sit down and say, this is the value of the work I'm bringing. This is the value of the work you're bringing. Let's draft a memorandum of understanding. If it's something that you're not very good in, you can reach out to a lawyer and you get these things sorted out eventually. But then just like Alex said, just like we said earlier, the first step towards collaboration is not only about getting what you can from the person, but giving. What can I give to contribute to the idea you have? What can I add? What value do I have to add to the plan on the ground? And when you're selling the idea, because a lot of times, just like I talked about the CEO syndrome, when we're selling an idea, we don't come and go about saying, hey, this is what I want to do. How can you help me? No, you you go, you go take it another way. You say, this is the idea I'm having. How best do you think we can work on this? That way you create an inclusive atmosphere where people feel like they are part of the process, not only part of the implementation, like you're employing them to do something. But when you have them at the beginning as part of the process, then it becomes easier to collaborate and you get things going. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. Uh, Samuel, did you pick questions from any anywhere on Facebook? Oh, just one. Sorry. Um. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yes, I just realized uh, we're supposed to answer the other questions, right? Yes, go ahead, please. Yes. So, uh, someone talked about. Uh, can a product be a product without it reaching its final consumer? I think that was a question in the beginning. Yes, I think so, yeah. Now, uh, when it's interesting because it, it sounds like you it's planned out. Uh, a product can only be a product when it has vision to please or attend to the needs of its consumer. So now before you have a product, you must have had consumers in mind that would consume the product. So what we're actually going to focus on, because you already know the answer to your question, a product cannot be a product if it doesn't reach its consumer. But then it can reach its consumer if you brand properly, if you market properly, if you take 
advantage of your digital literacy. If you take advantage of the social platforms, you advertise your products, eventually they will get to know about what you're selling and then reach out to you or you reach out to them. It's even easier now. You can do promotions online and AI will help you to target your particular customers or audience in mind and then you get your products out there. I think that was just the answer I wanted to add to the first question. Okay, all right, thank you. Sama, are you there? Hello. Yes, do we have questions on Facebook? Um, from what I've seen from the Facebook, uh, there's one from Kachiku Uzo Isaac. He said, what kind of social activities do you want to foster with entrepreneurship? And then the second question is from Amara Humaro. How are we to bridge the political barriers that be cloud entrepreneurship in Africa? Those are the two questions I can say from there. Can you hear me? But I'm not sure. Let me check. I'll get back to you. Let me let you. Can you hear me? No, I think they can, they can still be sending. You see, I think. Can you hear the question as I read? Wait, I, yes, oh, I didn't I get the first hear. one. Okay, let me read those questions again. Just one minute. The first question is from Kachiku Uzo, Isaac. What kind of social activities do you want to foster with your entrepreneurship? Then secondly, how are we to bridge the political barriers that be cloud entrepreneurship in Africa? Go okay. ahead. Anna. Go ahead now. Okay, so um, if I can answer briefly, I think I would like to answer how to break political barriers in terms of policies that are out there that limits young people from actively selling their products to consumers, either nationally or globally. I think one of the steps to understanding breaking political barriers is actually researching and reading. A lot of times, uh, as young people, we don't really know the laws that are in place in terms of global trade. And I say that with all honesty. Uh, someone talked about trying to do a career business on the platform a few minutes ago, and he was asking how he can go globally in terms of reaching his consumers. Now, the question I would have thrown back to him is, when he figured out he had that idea, what, who, first of all, who, 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 who was the first, uh, or would I say what business or what particular brand came to him first that uh, encouraged him to also go in line with what they're doing? For example, we have Jumia, we have Alibaba, we have all those other platforms, right? We have uh, DHL, we have other companies that are into, deliveries as well so now but then something triggered you and encouraged you that your dream is possible and when you figure out your dream is possible what steps did you take in trying to find out that it is possible in your region just like chief alex has said earlier there are policies in place for us to be able to engage in global businesses there are barriers but there are opportunities we are aware for example that uh, countries like rwanda and uh, Kenya also are working towards removing visas for Africans. Are you also reading to know what they are doing in terms of global trade? So these are questions that you need to ask yourself. We can't answer it for everybody. It is up to us to go around and read about these opportunities. And then about breaking political barriers. I think even from the not too young to run, we are beginning to see that action is what is needed. For us to be able to break the barriers, we have to be part of the people in leadership. A lot of times, especially for us, that uh, young people that have gone through formal education, tertiary education, we tend to be observers and critics of leaders. 
and shy away from political positions. We've demonized, even religious bodies have demonized politicians ah, it's a dirty business it's a dirty business but when you don't join and don't get elected or appointed then you don't become part of the process or people that make the policies that will bring in opportunities for young people so it's important that we key into these opportunities that has to do with political spaces if not there won't be opportunities for us to be able to create a table because there's no table for us to be able to create a table so that we can join and bring other people with us. Thank you. Over to you, um, Daniel. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Kalura. Um, let's move to Alex. Alex, you have something to add quickly before we go? Okay. Uh, in terms of uh, focusing and removing political barriers uh, for entrepreneurs, I think it's it's key because we we cannot have an ecosystem that is thriving without policies and the right uh, legal frameworks that support and protect startups and investments in, in across the continent. But again, Kalura talked about understanding the existing laws. You cannot you cannot just wake up in the morning and say, I want to be an entrepreneur today and everything happens, right? You have to understand the laws that exist within your ecosystem, but then also how do entrepreneurs create synergies and collaborations and network that can influence changes within uh, their countries? Because uh, entrepreneurship is not a, a new concept in Africa, but then it's fairly picking up in terms of getting the political buy-in and recognitions. I know few countries across the continent have the startup laws um, startup act in, in few countries. I know in Sierra Leone, for instance, we have the small and medium-sized enterprise act, which also look at a couple of things that it, it's a green conversations, right? But then uh it how serious we are as young entrepreneurs across the continent that determines the political shift or the or the shift in paradigms of what politics determine us to become. But now the tool also is that, as I said, we have a lot of young people in strategic positions in both public and private sector. How do we engage these young people that we need a lot more change, like conversations like this we're having for the Global Entrepreneurship Week are key. But then beyond the Global Entrepreneurship Week, how do we continue to create platforms and, and spaces where we were able to speak to so the challenges, but also not only calling out the challenges, but are able to provide solutions and we're able to 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 influence. But a biggest win for startup and, and young entrepreneurs in terms of political shift and paradigm is when we provide, we have to be able to provide a value that can catch the attention of the government as entrepreneurs in the continent. When we are able, when we design our solutions, when we design our product. We have to be intentional and deliberate about how these products and services can influence and change society. The more we have entrepreneurs doing those designs, then it's easy and it's like an easy layout. We're able to influence and we're able to connect and network with the right uh, power holders and people that the stakeholders that are able to determine the required changes and the and the laws we need in our ecosystems. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's actually been an exciting moment uh, with you too. Uh, it's been a very wonderful conversation. And I believe that uh, all our participants across our network of American Space have actually had a very wonderful time hearing from you, the wonderful insight, sharing your wonderful experiences. And we sincerely want to thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please let's put our hands together for Chief Alex and Akadura. Please, let's do that quickly. Thank you so much for coming on our program. I will quickly pass on to uh, Samuel okay. Eitel to properly thank you and also give out announcements as for today's program. Thank you so much. Samuel, over to you. Thank you very much. Let's put our hands together for even Daniel also. <laughs> thank you very much for this uh, wonderful session. Uh, you did a great job in coordinating it. And once again, we would like to thank Chief Chief Alex and Kadura for this wonderful session. We really appreciate it. You can see the engagement. And we believe that you have a lot more to offer. And so we look forward to another opportunity. And we know what we call you. You always answer us. 
So thank you very much. Let's put our hands together for them for coming on this program. Thank you very much. Um, this is a five-day um, entrepreneurship week program. Today is just the beginning. And as you know, we started on a very good footing. I want to still encourage you to invite your friends. We want this whole place, your American space, to be filled with people. So please invite people for events like this. And tomorrow, we're continuing with the same theme. Um, and at the end of the day, if you look at the website, let me just quickly open it. I would like you to day two, which is uh, Tuesday, we have gender equality in entrepreneurship. And um, I would like to encourage you to please be present, invite your friends, and I believe that you are going to benefit a lot even from the event. I'm sharing the uh, program with you right now. You can see it on your screen. So please, let's invite people. And then each and every event is being screened live on the U.S. Mission Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash U.S. in Nigeria and all other cooperating American um, spaces and um, embassies in the West Africa. We also have for the American space, Nigeria. You can see it on the screen. On your left-hand corner, you see the link for fb.me slash American Spaces NG. Join us tomorrow. Till then, I want to appreciate all of you, all our directors, for making this program a success today. Bye-bye to you, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye, Chief. Bye, Dan. Bye. 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 See you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Join Thank you, minutes before the event. Thank you. Bye-bye, sir. Bye. Bye.